you? Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're doing deep, deep down. Well, they were one of the biggest boy bands of the 90s with 12 top 10 hits and 20 million albums sold thanks to tracks like this one. Busted, okay, you, you busted, busted deluxe. to that one. Uh, Frontman Tony Mortimer, though, has just released his first solo album. We're thrilled to say he joins us now live from London. Tony, we just got busted dancing to your moves. You must get that a lot. Oh, I love it. The old tracks. Bring them on. And look at How are you guys? We're fantastic. Good to see you looking very well. Now, is it true that you were given a record deal on the condition that you formed a group? Uh, yeah, well, I was told to put a band together and um, I... I came up with the idea, I kind of took the idea from New Kids on the Block, if I'm honest, and formed what I thought would be a band that could, we'd do it better. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Oh, the, the, the confidence of youth. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you know, the, I like, love seeing the fashion in some of like the East beaning. 17 clips because they epitomise yeah, yeah. the 90s. How do you feel when you look at those videos back? Um, it's like looking back at an old school photo or a, 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 an old family wedding, the videos and stuff. I, I smile because, you know, fashion's changed. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, it was very difficult after I left the band and fashion's changed quickly and you became out of fashion. That was difficult. But now looking back, it's funny. Mm. And I was so slim then as well. <laughs> <laughs> you look marvellous now too. Now, look, the band was an instant hit. So, uh, you know, we look at it, you know, how fame, you know, people are handing fame at the moment in the, in the, eye, in the eye of the pop world, like my Cyrus, etc. How did you guys handle the fame? We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? I don't think you do handle fame, do you? You just cope with it. Um, you, you deal with it how you deal with it. It's crazy. It's like you're living in this bubble and you... It, it's crazy. You, you have to be very accepting. You accept things that happen, things that are written about you that aren't true and stuff. And then you realise there's actually this kind of person developing in the media that's not you at all but you're related so yeah. you've kind of got to take a step back so Tony can you imagine what life is like say for the guys from one direction could I imagine what it's like yeah I, it's probably not as much fun as we had but I could imagine very much what it's like yeah what do you mean by could that do you think I hope, uh, hmm? what do you mean by that they're probably not as fun as you had you, you think you guys would have had more fun or that, more that freedom more freedom and they're more controlled I, by maybe I think we had I think we had a bit more freedom in them days. Um, I think people in general, bands in general, had more freedom, but we was pretty uncontrollable anyway. So we, we just went with it. Um, I hope they're enjoying themselves, though. That's the main thing. Go with it. Enjoy it. It doesn't last forever. And just make the most of it. Mm. You've spoken a lot in the media and music press and stuff like that about your depression. Uh, you know, was there a lot of pressure on you, you know, during the band and post E17? Um, yeah, there, there was. I think... Um, you know, yeah, there was, to, to keep writing songs and keep the machine going that, that became this machine, it was, yeah, there was a lot of pressure, and I was putting myself under a lot of pressure to keep doing it as well. Um, I remember the first album took a, basically a couple of years, really, to write from the ideas to the finish, and then the next album, the record company said to me, OK, you've got two weeks, which turned out to be ten days. Wow. So it was all a bit, I thought, well, that's great, because I haven't actually got any songs at the moment. Yeah, that like a deadline. The biggest selling album. Yeah, that was a serious deadline. I had to cancel my holiday and everything while oh. the other guys went on holiday. <laughs> oh, but, oh, wow. Now, Tony, you've just released your debut solo album, which is very exciting. Is it hard to separate from the boy band image? Is it? Um, not really, no. I think so much time has passed. So I think... I, I, I don't think it's that hard, no. Mm -hmm. um, I think some people think I'm 21 still and I wear a beanie, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> let's, let's no, I don't think it's that hard. Obviously, I accept my past, and I think that's the major thing you have to do so that you can move on. I accept my past, and I look back at it, and, uh, you know, it's part of me, it's part of my life, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Well, Tony, let's talk brass taxi. I mean, take that just made a mozza getting back together. You've got to think. Get the band back together after this little solo project you're doing. Get them back together. Clean up. E17, let's do a reunion. We'll buy tickets. We're there. Walthamstow. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, me and Terry talk a lot about doing it. I think the reality of it ever happening um, is... Oh, I just can't... I can't see four of us ever getting on stage again, ever agreeing to, but um, me and Terry are up for it, but I don't think it'll ever happen. 
Well, well, we will hold that, and we're looking forward to hearing more from you and the new solo record. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Tony. Tony Mortimer there. How good is that? I know. I want to hear more E17 now, though. If we can, we'll just keep just playing keep all playing day. Let us know your favourite E17 hits, and if you're a fan, go onto our Twitter and Facebook page. Come